Greetings, welcome to Champions Focused Presentations. Today we're going to be working on IBM Endpoint Manager, aka Big Fix, and we're going to learn how to lower your support costs and increase visibility with Endpoint Manager. And as we walk through this, there's really only one question that's important. It really is, why should you care? And hopefully throughout this presentation we'll answer that. For any organization in size, they have a data center. It could be from 10 servers to thousands of servers inside the data center. But some of the characteristics are the same. Usually static IP addresses, limited privileged access, change control around all installed products on your servers. And some of the recent changes in technology has given up to virtualization. Basically having more systems and more computing power in the same footprint. You can automatically provision systems, dynamically adjust these systems. And some of the questions that arise, for example, is how often would you update your gold image when you're bringing up a new server? But the bottom line is a data center has the most secure and static systems in any corporation. So with these in mind, some of the questions we want to ask you or for you to think about are as follows. Inside of your data center today, can you today find what systems are out of compliance in your data center? Can you determine what patches are required for security fixes? Can you sort them pri by priority? So once you even know what these patches are, can you sort them by priority? And if you had to pass an audit, whether internal or external, could you do so with an accurate report? And if so, how long would it take to do that? So if we move on to the desktops, if you have tens or hundreds of systems in your data center, you probably have hundreds to thousands of computers out on the data uh, desktop world. And again, they have static IP addresses, limited controls, and limited control around install products, right? This is usually not the case. In the desktop world, it's usually more of a wild, wild west. And as we can see, laptops, remote users, traveling, VPN capabilities, high-speed modems has led to a mobile workforce. And they can attach from unsafe networks. They can not even have to be connected to the corporate network for true sales folks. They could be working anywhere and any time. And as we know, mobile workforce gives a 66 or 67% rise to help desk related calls. So we still have some of the same questions. They're just at a different scope. You still have to find systems out of compliance. You still have to patch these systems from a security perspective. You still need to sort them by priority. And you still need to pass an audit with accurate report, again, internal or external. It's just a different scope when we're dealing with the desktop systems, which can range from Macintosh to various versions of Windows and even Linux in the desktop world. But these also present some more questions. What about a disconnected device, somebody that's not attached to the network at all? Could you software meter your applications? What about remote control for help desk support when someone's sitting at a Starbucks? Can you save money on power consumption if you have a campus style environment? Can you even prevent data leaks for classified information? Um, if you notice some of these numbers, for example, software meeting your applications, 12.3, that was a study done. $12.3 billion in the United States alone was spent on software licenses that are never used. Think about that. Any organization has some of their money tied up in that $12.3 billion. And power consumption. If you're a campus-style environment, if you look at someone working eight hours a day um, for five days a week, they're basically using 23.8% power if the machine is powered on all the time. Be able to save on your electric bill by shutting down the machines and bringing them to a silent state. Today's technology allows us to do that, and even the hardware alone is not enough because applications introduce things such as PC narcolepsy and PC insomnia, which prevents the machines from going to sleep. So our answer to these things is a single low-pack solution, and that is IBM Endpoint Manager. I'm not going to read everything on this screen here, but I do want to point out a few pieces. First of all, it's an intelligent agent. It's set to use no more than 2% of your CPO, CPU. And it has real-time data reporting, not like other software where you have to kick off a scan, wait for the data to be collected, then run, run your reports. You get real-time information for all these things on the outside. For example, lifecycle management, which includes patch, hardware, software, inv inventory, OS deployment, remote control, software usage and analysis. As I said, it's beyond just inventory. It's actually finding all the software installed in your environment, but also showing you who's using it and when. Again, we go back to that number of $12.3 billion. If you're paying for licensing on software you're not using, renegotiate your contracts. And again, if you're going to have an audit come up, it would be nice to have no surprises. You'd be able to import your contracts into software usage and analysis, and it would tell you exactly where you sit from a software auditing standpoint. You don't want to be hit with true up fines and penalty fees for having software from Microsoft, Adobe, IBM, and all the other tools power management we talked about, mobile devices, that's a 
section of its own and is a different PowerPoint presentation just for mobility. And again, think about mobility there is if you're pushing out email or sharing documents or so forth, it is a huge security risk and it's kind of labeled the hole in your pocket. Patch management, of course. We need to be able to patch our systems, whether they're on the network, disconnected, or so forth. Being able to stop breaches like SQL injection or Heartbleed, some of the ones that came out last year. Server automation is another key feature, allowing you to do complex tasks, such as patching a SQL cluster or an exchange cluster, for an example. Security compliancy, if you have things like... Uh, P PCI, uh, HIPAA, all other different requirements. You can run a host-based security and compliancy. So not just showing you where you're vulnerable, but actually able to enforce policies for security and compliancy. And core protection, that's your anti-malware, data protection, DLP for device control. Uh, you can be able to control the firewall on the different machines and even isolate a machine that has some type of breach on it. So the only communication coming back and forth is from the big fix environment. Again, just want to iterate that a single server from Endpoint Manager can handle up to 250,000 endpoints. It is a real-time reporting system because the intelligence is actually sitting down at the agent. And the beauty of this is one, it's a single solution, single console. It's a single agent that's been able to do all of those functions above just needs the license to say it's okay over a single port which makes your network team very very happy so if we take a look at this what is your average architecture in a big fix environment well first of all in your data center which is where you'd have your server you run on sql server and it would be able to pull content down from the uh, internet, meaning all your new patches and so forth would be coming down from the internet from the big fix systems. So for an example, when Microsoft releases its patches, the IBM team is out there validating the patches, creating the fixlet content, which gets automatically pulled down to your server, kind of like a news group. Your server in turn is able to push this out to your machines. It's not making any changes. It's simply asking these systems what patches are needed to be applied to different systems. Basically, are they relevant? For a small office, we pop in a relay, which is nothing more than a piece of software that could be sitting on a file and print server, backup domain controller, doesn't have to be a dedicated server. And then it would be able to handle the bandwidth of data coming from the corporate center to the small office and then fan out to the machines there. If you do want to control disconnected machines, meaning someone sitting at home, someone at Starbucks, you simply need a relay in the DMZ. The relay in the DMZ will handle your DMZ devices across the firewall over that single port and will also be able to report on machines in real time that are out on the internet itself. And even if you're flying on a Delta jet at 30,000 feet and you launch into GoGo -Go Wireless, you are again managed in real time back at corporate headquarters. So let's take a quick look at patch management. Again, you get IBM content from the cloud. You don't have to run around and figure out reading news groups and figuring out what new patches came out, have to scan your machines, log on to them, determine if they need patches. You're going to get that data automatically. When you come in the next morning, the system is already going to tell you which machines need patches where. And again, it works across Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Unix. The benefits of this simply is you're reducing your patch time. Uh, most organizations, if they're doing pretty well, have a first pass remediation rate from 60 to 75 percent. With Endpoint Manager, it's proven that we can increase that first pass remediation rate to about 95 to 99 percent. Again, going from weeks and days to hours and minutes to actually do and enforce your, your patching across the board. Um, and again, it's automated self-assessment. There's no scanning required. There's no work on your part. The Endpoint simply check in and tell you what patches are relevant and where you need to start patching your environment. And if you can do this, here's a simple dashboard that comes up. Putting in any environment, it's instantly going to give you a return on investment and show you which patches have to be delivered to which machines. Again, no work on your part. The system does this for you automatically. And really, where are you saving most of your time? If we look at a normal patching process, you'd have to monitor research what patches are available. You have to test the packages, make sure that the patches are actually applicable in your environment. You have to analyze your environment for missing patches. You actually have to go and detect that. And then over on the patching team side, you would actually prioritize your systems. You'd start the patching process, and then you'd have to start everything in green all over again to determine, did the patch actually go into place, right? Um, which machines missed the patch? In this case, everything in green is automated from big fix. And really what you're responsible for is over there in the yellow. And that's the integration um, or intervalues you're talking with, talking with your change management, right? When do you deploy patches? What is your downtime? Can I reboot the servers and so forth? But 60% of the work has simply been moved over into pure automation. 
One of the other things we look at is the patches as they come over from IBM in the fixlet inside of the console. We're not hiding anything from you. It gives you everything that the vendor had shot out. So if there's a description of a particular patch, it's going to tell you. If there's any important notes, it'll tell you. If there's known issues, it even gives you the KB article numbers in the case of Microsoft. So again, everything is in there. We can even drill in further and actually look at the exact code that makes it relevant for a particular box. Again, our point here is not to teach you relevancy in this presentation, but simply to show you that every point of the way, you can simply look inside of each fixlet and nothing is hidden. There's no black box. It's telling you exactly what you're doing. And of course, with these, you're also getting reports. So not just from the console of Endpoint Manager, it also comes with a reporting system that gives you real-time data on the patches in your environment and where they need to be deployed, where they have been deployed, and what steps have to be done next. A very easy-to-use reporting system from patch management. If we look at the power management module, again, same agent is running this stuff. It simply needs the license to say it's okay. You don't have to install any more hardware. You can just turn on power management and then you could do things such as enforcing machines to go to sleep, enforcing them to wake up, enforcing them to adhere to patching windows. For example, if you have machines that shut down but your patching window is every other Thursday from 10 to 1 in the morning, you could make sure these systems power themselves up so they don't miss a patching window. Um, it has a what-if calculator, so you can actually view what your current power consumptions are based on CO2 emissions and the different types of machines you have out there, and basically adjust it and say, well, if I put in certain power management policies, what types of benefits would I be able to get? And over on the right-hand side there, uh, a bank <coughs> currently running power management was expected to save up to $175,000 off its electric bill. Think about that. It's $175,000 in its electric bill that it's going to save from this point going forward every year. On that note, not just saving, most power companies, if you prove that you have a green initiative, which Endpoint Manager can give you the reports for, will actually give you a discount on the rest of your power bill. So a quick look at that. Each machine can show you exactly what it's consuming. Uh, very detailed reports so that we can utilize and give that back to internal audits to show that we're going green or to an electric company to prove we've taken a green initiative. And again, we have overall reports showing us where our current power consumption is, how often the machines are idle, when they're powered off, when they're in a standby state, when they're actually active. So very detailed reports from power management to actually make this work inside the Big Fix console, they give you predefined tasks or fixlets that you could run on your machines to actually bring power management under control. This is not hard to do. Simply enforcing these fixlets into policies then creates a power management structure for your organizations on the desktops that really brings your power management under control. And this next screen here is actually one that we have done where we started working on a particular set of machines. They started out with a PMI rating of zero. Their bar was way up in the red. And over time, we started to show that they could control their power consumption and actually come into a green rate. We could even show them how much money they're saving from their electric bill over time. One of the other modules we talked about, software usage and analysis. Again, not just inventorying your environment, but actually showing you in real time how often and where these software products are in use. So the clear benefits are that you're getting software inventory, which is great, but you're also getting that usage and analysis reporting. So that could help you identify areas where you are paying for software licensing that you're not using, and you might as well renegotiate your contracts, or to be able to show you if you had to deploy, for example, maybe a new SAP app, um, and you didn't know where your license pool was. A simple report could show us how many we have left based on our contracts, show us if we're under or overutilized, and if we're overutilized, we could find a machine that hasn't been using the application for, let's say, a few months. We could use Big Fix to actually remove the application and move it to the new system that is requiring the application. Here's a quick screen just showing you it's not only inventorying the systems, uh, it's hard to read on this, but if you actually look what's circled in red is showing you how often the applications are actually being used on different machines if they're being used at all. So again, going above and beyond simply inventory. Within the system we can also add contracts. So from your procurement area. You can take the contracts for software that you've purchased, assign them out to different groups of machines or the corporation as a whole, and then you can run reports to show you how if you're in uh, compliancy with software contracts. It'll show you how many are used for which department and how much the software costs and if you're over or under your current software obligations from a license standpoint.
So now that we looked at these a little bit, we want to take a look at what else is coming. And yes, there is more. So at the time of this, the biggest inflow of unclaimed devices in 20 years is happening now. And if you haven't guessed it, it is the mobile world. So these are your smartphones, your tablets, and so forth coming in. And in January of 14th, 2015, the mobile market or the mobile usage on the internet has surpassed all desktops, laptops, and server-based equipment. So this is a huge piece of the equation from a security standpoint and from a manageability standpoint in any organization. So there is a mobility piece of MPM Endpoint Manager, which is Moz360 from Fiberlink. It is a SaaS-based solution. However, you can have it on-premise. And again, some of the coolest parts about this, it's simply bringing the manageability of those mobile devices under control from an MDM standpoint, from a security standpoint, from a secure application standpoint, being able to support BYOD and corporate owned devices so that you can control where the data lies, prevent data leakage, for example, uh, secure documents that are shared between mobile devices. And of course, we know that mobile devices are just easier to get stolen or lost to be able to wipe these devices, either the corporate data, the whole device, or even geo-track these devices for uh, bringing back stolen devices. So again, as we look at this, the Endpoint Manager family has a lot of things with it. Lifecycle management, patch management, mobile, security compliance, server automation, software usage analysis, power management, and core protection. While we didn't cover everything in detail in this presentation, we just want to reiterate again that the single agent, single system can support all of these features and functions. So again, a complete management solution of all your devices. What we want to look at going through is you want complete management from the desktop to the data center, the client and server systems, all the way up to your mobile environment. And challenges with current tools is you probably have multiple tools doing some of these features and functions with multiple agents out there. Endpoint management can simply bring all of this under one plane of glass in a simple, easy to use environment to comprehend and control all your mobile and laptops and server equipment, basically all of your endpoints. <coughs> So here's a little piece. I just like to look at this one. I've always liked this. And you want to be looking at the future, looking where things are. You don't want to constantly be fighting fires, but you want to be able to have a long-term solution for your endpoint management that covers all of the components we talked about today and more. So again, why do we sell Endpoint Manager? It's very easy to deploy, very easy to use. It gives you quick return on investments. Um, from a customer perspective, some of the tools they use today are usually slow and uh, reactive, where in Endpoint Manager, it's real-time reporting purposes and lets you be more proactive. And again, just simply a 95 to 99 percent first-pass remediation on issues in your organizations. And, and the bottom line is you're saving money, you're saving man hours to make this stuff work great. So here's a couple quick slides of different areas that have used Endpoint Manager and some of the things they have said. Uh, again, millions of dollars saved on power management, for example, being able to save yourself from software audits. Um, and IBM themselves has rolled out Endpoint Manager in their organization, and they're expected to save about $10 million in a single year just by man hours alone and be able to manage their devices. So some cool things here. Other points, different schools, different places that have used Endpoint Manager and some of the uh, success stories they've had and, and also some of the issues they've had with it. So if you're interested in endpoint management, I would urge you to Google it, look on YouTube and see where different people are using this product. And again, some of the pieces and parts. Thank you for watching and from Champion, I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please visit our website and you can download a free trial of patch management with Endpoint Manager and we'd be more than happy to answer some of your questions or help you get a real POC going to show you the true benefit of Endpoint Manager.